Hello, my dear and beloved students. This is your professor, Teresa Vasquez, here to give you your introductory video for biopsychology, also known as Psych 360. And today I'm just going to talk about the syllabus and the policies and procedures for this class. First, I'll go over a little bit of general information. This class is offered as an asynchronous virtual instruction class. What does that mean? It just means that there's no specific meeting time for this class. My office hours are scheduled right now for Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And they're virtual office hours, meaning I am going to make myself available at those times for students, for all of you. Um, I already have an open forum that I've set up on Cougar Courses, and the open forum is for you to ask and answer any questions that you have. So students are welcome to ask any questions they have within the open forum, and other students are free to answer those questions if they already know the answers. So, for example, if somebody asked when are office hours, another student could respond Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. If there continue to be ongoing questions in the open forum, I will address these either in videos or in announcements to the class. So I want to be flexible on office hours and see what works for everybody. You can contact me by email. You can contact me through Cougar Courses. We can set up uh, Zoom meetings with one another or video chats if that is what ends up being what's required of the course as it goes on. So I'm going to be flexible there and listen to your feedback and hopefully we'll figure out something that works for all of us. My main email address is pencilproductions at yahoo.com. I've had this email address since 1995 and everything forwards to that email address. So through the school, I have other email addresses like tcook at csusm.edu. Any email that you use for me will forward to Pencil Productions. Even if you contact me through Cougar Courses, it forwards through my email. So whatever way you use of contacting me, I'm sure we will get in touch. Uh, the prerequisites for this course include Psych 100 and Psych 230, so you had to have taken introductory psychology to get into research methods, and you have to have taken research methods to be in this class, or the equivalent biology course. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about are lectures and how they are going to be structured for this course. Um, I would say that the lectures are the most important part of this course. 75% of the material on exams will be covered in my video lectures. The video lectures will be posted weekly. Usually they will post on a Monday unless there's a holiday that week. So for example, this coming week, there's a holiday on Monday, so the lecture will be posted on Tuesday. This lectures, this mini introductory lecture is being posted on a Friday, so you have an entire week to watch this video. I expect that you'll watch it sometime between today, this Friday, and next Friday. And then when I post the first real lecture where there's actual material on Tuesday, you should watch that lecture sometime between that Tuesday and the following Tuesday, and then each lecture should be posted every Monday uh, after that each week, <clears throat> again, unless there's a holiday that week. And I expect you to watch the lecture within one week of it being posted. You will never be asked to interact with a lecture or watch a lecture uh, and get less than a week to watch that lecture. So you will always have at least one week to watch each lecture, but you should view it within that first week. If you allow things to stack up in this class, it's really going to hurt you. And I'm going to talk about that more as the class goes on. I mean, as this lecture goes on. So this class is probably the hardest class you are going to take at CSUSM, maybe in your career. It is 
a neuroscience course. It is a biopsychology course. This material is fundamentally difficult to understand and it requires a lot of practice. And so this course has a lot of supplemental materials and supplemental instruction to help you maximize your ability to understand the information in this class. Your SI leader has already introduced herself and she's going to be having a lot of interaction with you this semester to help you understand the material as best you possibly can. So go ahead and check out all the material she posts and go ahead and listen and look for her announcements as well. In addition to supplemental instruction, which is offered through the university, I have constructed a number of supplemental materials for this class. The supplemental materials will be clearly marked as supplemental materials on Cougar courses. And these are extra items that I've put together for you to help you understand whether or not you're understanding the material. So there are some little mini quizzes you can self-administer. There are review questions that you can go through. And there's a very large series of online videos and interactive materials that I've put together that mirror the course concepts as we go along through the semester. So none of these things are required of the course. None of these things are graded for credit. You do not have to use any of them in order to understand all of the material that you need for the course. All of the material will be contained within lectures and within your reading. These supplemental materials are just that. They're so you can have extra support and go to them as often as you need in order to really work through the concepts of neuroscience. So those materials will be posted on Cougar courses as we go through the semester and you will see that they go along with the lectures and the readings. When it comes to your exams, you're going to have four exams in this class and they are going to be a little bit different than biopsych exams in the past, though I think that you will find that they have the same general themes. The exams are all open notes. I can't prevent you from using your books or even really using the internet while you're at home taking these exams, and that's okay. The internet and your book are not going to help you on the exam unless you have already read and understood the material before you got to the exam. The exam questions are created by me, and they are applied questions specific to the material that we cover in lectures and the reading. So if you've watched all your lectures, taken good notes, done all the reading, taken good notes on that, and reviewed and studied your notes just like you would if you were in biopsychology on campus, that's going to be your best preparation for exam, for each exam. And each exam just covers the material from the previous section of class, which is clearly outlined in the schedule. If you look at the schedule, you'll see that the first topics that we cover are nervous system anatomy, neurons and support cells, action potentials and receptors, receptors and neurotransmitters, and drugs and neurotransmitters, and then we have an exam. So those are all the topics that will be covered on the first exam. And then the same is true for the second and third and fourth. All we're covering on the exam is the specific material from that last section of class. And what's going to happen is I will post the exams online and you will have 48 hours to follow the instructions from the time it's posted until the time it's due. You're going to turn it back in through Cougar courses and you will be given very complete and detailed instructions for how to do this how to complete the exams. So for example, the first exam is Monday, September 28th, posted at noon, and it's due Wednesday, September 30th at noon. It's posted on Cougar Courses. It's turned in through Cougar, Cougar Courses. 
<clears throat> and again, you will get very detailed instructions for how to do that. The exam does not take anywhere near 48 hours to complete. You could complete the exam during one class period if we were on campus. So the most it's going to take you or should take you to complete an exam is a few hours. But you're given 48 hours so that you can do your exam anytime within a two day window and turn it in. And the exam dates that are posted are the dates we are going to have exams. So we will have an exam posted on September 28th and then another one on October 19th and so on. You should look at your schedule. It says all of the exam dates. That won't change. The only thing that could change is if we don't get to certain material. We are going to take it week by week and when we get to an exam, you will have material on the exam that comes from the material we've already covered in lectures and in reading. So we're going to take it on a week by week basis. As usual, the exams will be worth 100 points each and I will grade on a curve. I will add that curve into the scores you see posted online and makeup exams are offered in cases of documented medical emergencies for yourself or your immediate family. So if you find yourself in that situation where you're having a medical emergency or somebody you're responsible for is having an, a medical emergency, let me know and we will absolutely work that out. All right, the next thing I want to talk about are your journal article reports. And that's how you're going to fulfill the, re the written requirement for this class. Every class requires 10 pages of uh, written uh, written assignments. And in this class, you're going to have three journal article reports. And then at the end, you're going to have one alternative assignment that I'll talk about later. Each journal article report is one and a half to two pages long. It's worth 25 points a piece. So between the three journal article reports and the one alternative assignment, that's 100 points total equivalent to one more exam. And what you do for your journal article reports is find a primary empirical research article and then you're going to review it. So that means you need to know what a primary empirical research article is. And if you don't know what that is, you need to find out. So that's something that you should be familiar with from Psych 100 and Psych 230. You should know what a primary empirical study is. You should be able to find one, and then you're going to write a short report on it. So you're going to look through the computer databases that you would typically look through that you learned in your research methods class, like Psych Info or PubMed, and you're going to find a research study, and it's going to be something that's about the subject matter of each section in class. So for journal article report one, the topics are going to be nervous system and anatomy, neurons and support cells, action potentials and receptors, receptors and neurotransmitters, drugs and neurotransmitters. Then when you do journal article report two, the topics will be vision, audition, olfaction, gustation, memory, and learning and so on and so forth as you go through the syllabus and see the different topics. So the topics that we cover for exam one are the same topics that are up for grabs for you to write about in journal article one. You're going to talk about the goals, the methods, the results, and the conclusions of the studies that you review. And then you're going to turn in what you write and a PDF copy of the article that you reviewed, you will see these things clearly marked on Cougar Courses a week before it's time to turn them in. You can email me or the grader for this class, your, your graduate assistant for this class, a copy of your article ahead of time in order to get it approved. Um, and you're going to submit these documents to Cougar Courses uh, on the due dates, again, documented medical emergencies are reasonable excuses for being able to make them up. There are extremely detailed instructions 
for how to complete this assignment in your syllabus. If you look at page 7 of your syllabus, you are given very detailed instructions for completing this assignment. In addition to that, I will be posting a rubric that specifies a point-by-point -point breakdown for how your grade is calculated for your journal article reports. So, before you go to ask me or your GA any questions, please, please carefully read the syllabus. If you want to get a good grade on these assignments, please read and follow the instructions in the syllabus. They are there and they are detailed so that you can read them and be successful. Speaking of reading, this week all you were supposed to do was read the syllabus. I also have in the schedule readings from chapter one and chapter two. If you have gotten your book to go ahead and start reading them this week. But if you don't have your book yet, that's okay. I have dedicated this first week to being week zero, meaning there is nothing you are expected to do this week except be signed up for the class and read the syllabus. I'm posting this video on Friday and you have an entire week to watch this video. The first lecture video will be on Tuesday and then you'll have an entire week to watch that video. But you'll see that there are readings on your schedule. There are no readings posted for the week before the exam. Well, that's because I built in an extra week so that everybody would be caught up with all the reading by the time of the exam. You must do the reading in this class. If you do not engage seriously with the reading in this class, you will have a very hard time passing exams. This is one of the only classes you are ever going to take where reading is essential to you passing the class. There are many classes where you can skate by without ever looking at the textbooks that come with the class. This is not one of those classes. You absolutely must do the reading and take excellent notes on all of it. I recommend you do the reading as it's posted on the syllabus. So this first week, start with chapter one and chapter two of Cole. Then the week after that, chapter three, chapter four, chapter eight, as they're listed on the schedule. The material in this course is neuroscience. It's difficult to understand. And if you are not grappling with the reading in order to get understanding out of it, you are going to suffer. About 75% of the exam material is covered in your lectures, but it's also covered in your text. And there are parts of the exams that are covered only in the text. I specifically put questions on the exam to make sure that you have kept up with the reading. It is part of the material you are expected to interact with and understand in this class. You can look at the reviews of this class on Rate My Professor or anywhere else, and you will see the students tell you again and again you need to do the reading. Please believe them. Please believe me. You have to do the reading. One question that I get often is what about the editions of the texts? Is it okay to get an older edition? And my response to that is the newest edition is the best edition for you to get and the best one for your education. If you can obtain the newest edition for all of the books, that's the best thing for you and your learning. However, if the cost of the newest editions is so prohibitive for you that it means you won't buy the books, it's much better for you to get one edition back. So I call that one back. So if it's the sixth edition, you can go one back and get the fifth edition.
If it's the seventh edition that's required, you can go back one and get the sixth. One back is okay, newest is best. Don't go any older than one edition back. And you wanna go ahead and look in the syllabus and it gives you the latest editions and just know that you can go one back from that and you will still be okay and definitely do that rather than not get the texts. When it comes to DSS accommodations or accommodations for religious activities, I will do that in accordance with the university. A few of you have already contacted me and that's wonderful. I will of course work with anybody who needs DSS accommodations uh, and that's no problem. Just let me know. When it comes to academic on, uh, dishonesty and academic integrity in this class, you should know that I strictly enforce academic integrity like the professors are required to do at this, uh, at this school. All of us are required to report any suspected academic dishonesty to the dean. And so the two general rules in this class are this. Number one, you need to take your exams alone. You are not supposed to or allowed to um, interact with any other students when you are completing your exams. Like I say, you're going to be interacting with your notes. You're going to be able to refer to the books or even the internet, though I don't recommend you do that. You could, but one thing you should not and cannot do is interact with another student. If it's discovered that you are interacting with another student when you're completing your exams, that will be considered cheating and it will be reported to the dean. So that's one thing. Don't cheat on your exams. Don't talk to other students during the 48 hours that you're completing your exams. That has rarely been a problem in biopsych. The big problem that I come across again and again in biopsych is when people are writing their journal article reports. Way too many people cut and paste from the journal articles, and those are going to be the people who get reported to the dean. If you're trying to cut and paste and change a few words, it's going to show up on the plagiarism detector when you turn in your assignment, and that's going to be a huge problem. So your journal article reports, just like your exams, they'll be posted on Cougar Courses. There will be clear links where you turn them in on Cougar Courses. And there's a plagiarism detector built in to turn it in that is going to tell you and highlight exactly for you in your papers any sources of problematic wording. So please pay attention to that. I strongly recommend that you write your journal article report without looking at the journal article while you're writing it. Process it in your brain and then put the journal article away and write it in your own words. The entire point of this assignment is for you to let me know that you understand what you have read. And if you use their words, it lets me know that you didn't understand what you read. You need to use your own words. When it comes to classroom policies, all of your biopsych professors are going to be tough graders. It's a tough course and the material is tough. It's neuroscience. In order to get an A or B in this class, it means that you've really mastered the neuroscience material, the biopsychology material. It is not that difficult to get a C in this class. If you do all your work, you can absolutely get a C in this class. But learning a lot or taking a lot of notes or all these things that students say I did. Oh, I learned a lot. I took a lot of notes. You know, I really understand everything I heard. I listened to all the lectures. That's not enough in this class. You have to listen until you understand. You have to take notes. You have to ask questions in SI. You have to engage with the reading. You may have to do supplemental things in order to un engage with the supplemental materials in order to uh, further your understanding. Getting an A or a B in this class is very difficult. So set realistic expectations for yourself. 
don't fall apart if you don't get an easy A in this class because nobody has ever gotten an easy A in this class. This class requires hard work from even the toughest students. It's doable, but you have to do your work. When it comes to personal policies, essentially the only thing I really don't like is when students ask me what their grade is. Well, your grade is going to be posted online. If you got an 89 out of 100 on one test, and then uh, 75 out of 100 on the second test, and a 23 out of 25 on your journal article report number one, you could take your scores and divide it by the total score, and you will know exactly what your grade is in the class. The curve is already added into your grade. So if you ask me to do that for you, if you ask me to look up your grades and get out a calculator, I'm going to reduce your grade fi by five points for any time you ask that, simply because there's no reason to. Your grade is going to be posted online as soon as it's been calculated, and it's up to you to look at that and calculate your grade and see where you stand. The grade breakdown is very clear and very simple, posted in your syllabus, so just go ahead and take a look at that. So finally, I just want to say to you some words of wisdom. The lectures that I post for this class are absolutely crucial for you to interact with. They will be posted weekly, and you are expected to watch them within a week of them being posted. You are expected to take excellent notes on everything I say during lecture, and you are expected to work with the material until you understand it. The same is true of the reading. You are expected to do all of the reading starting this next week, and you are expected to interact in a serious way with the reading, take excellent notes on it, notes that you understand to where you're not just regurgitating material, but understanding it. Please make sure you ask your supplemental instructor or ask me or others on the open forum if you have questions. Make sure you take excellent notes throughout the semester. Be flexible. Everything is going to come at you week by week one week at a time. Just take it that way, and as we get to the exam, you will be only tested on the material we've covered. I love you. I want you to do well. I want you to be okay during this time. I want you to know how much I care about you and how much your well-being is important to me. So please know, just bring your best self to this class, and I'm going to bring my best self to you. We'll be patient with each other, and we will get through it. You're wonderful students. You're capable. You can do this. We're going to do this together. Okay, thanks. Have a great day, y'all. And I'll post your next lecture, the first lecture that actually has material, learning material, will be on Tuesday, as well as all of the other materials that you're going to need clearly marked week by week, take it a bit at a time, we can do this. Bye for now.